Since 2007, the Wegman School of Pharmacy at St. John Fisher College has created defining experiences for students and faculty through service trips both in the United States and abroad. Such trips are in keeping with the school's vision to foster civic integrity through service to the community and appreciation for diversity among students and the patients they serve. Today, we will be talking about one of this year's trips, which saw one faculty member, a local pharmacist, and 12 pharmacy students travel to El Salvador. Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Vicker of the Department of Media and Communication here at St. John Fisher College. Welcome to our community forum. Joining me in the studios of Cardinal Television are Dr. Amy Parkhill, Associate Professor, and Joy Snyder, a second year pharmacy student in the Wegman School of Pharmacy. We're going to be hearing more about their service trip to El Salvador and what it meant for them and for the people they served in this impoverished nation. So hello and welcome. Hello, thank you for having us. Thanks very much for joining us. Dr. Parkhill, I'd like to start with you. Could you talk a little bit about how El Salvador was chosen as the site for one of these trips? Sure, I think it was sort of by luck a little bit. So Dr. Bernie, um, who's now the interim dean of the School of Pharmacy, she knew that the, our very first class of pharmacy students was, was interested in going on a service trip in the summer after their first year. And so she did an internet search and started looking for different organizations that would accommodate pharmacy students. And I think she just called up this organization, Global Health Outreach, and asked them if they'd be willing to take some pharmacy students on their trip. And they said, yes, we have a trip to El Salvador that we would love to have pharmacy <laughs> students okay. and a pharmacist attend. So that was the very first trip in the summer of 2007. And since they had such a great experience on that trip, we've gone every summer since then and stayed with that same organization and the same team leader oh, on the trip. Excellent, excellent. And what are some of the other places where students have gone for service trips? So students have gone to Kenya, the Dominican Republic, Honduras, and India through the School of Pharmacy. Okay, and how are these trips um, you said that it was done under the auspices of this one organization, but within the School of Pharmacy, how do you decide who gets to go? How are the students chosen? Well, initially it was primarily just on student interest. So mm -hmm. if students were interested to go, we found a way to get them there. There is some cost associated with the trip, so sometimes that was a, um, a defining factor on whether or not mm -hmm. a student could go if, if they could afford mm -hmm. it. But. Um, most of the time it was just based on student interest. If the student wanted to go, we found a way to get them there. Um, we've seen an uptick in interest, so there is a short application that the students fill out if they're interested in attending the trip. Okay. And for you, was this your first time in El Salvador? It was my first time okay. in El Salvador. A first time going on an international um, service trip. Okay, and how did you decide this is something I want to do this summer? It's something I've always wanted to do mm -hmm. <laughs> since 2007. And just with life circumstances, this was the first time I was able to go on the trip. I went on a short trip um, to New Orleans the second year I w worked at the pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. And that was a great experience. And as an undergrad, I went on a lot of domestic service trips, but this was my first international trip. And it's something, Part of the reason why I'm at Fisher is because there's such a strong commitment to service mm -hmm. and that's yeah. something that spoke to me when I was looking for jobs mm -hmm. and so since I started here it's always something I wanted to do and this summer I finally got to do it so Excellent. it was very exciting and we yeah. had a fantastic group of students oh. that made it even more better. That, that's wonderful. So turning to you Joy Snyder, yes. could you talk a little bit about how you learned about the trip and how you decided that this was something you wanted to do with your first summer after your first year of pharmacy school? Yeah, so during our orientation week at Fisher, we have like a whole week getting started for school before our first year and they tell you right up front about two of the opportunities that you have for service trips, one to El Salvador and one to Montana. Um, and those ones are the ones that are available to the P1 students. And I like traveling internationally and going to a new place sounded really cool. Um, and I thought it, once getting there it was a really good experience. It really emphasized like learning top 200 drugs and all about dispensing and counseling patients. So it was a really great experience and I just thought it would be cool to travel and help people. And what kind of things did you have to do to prepare for the trip? Did you, did you have to know Spanish? We, no, we didn't have to know Spanish. Um, the, 
the hosts at the site actually have a school there, and so their high school juniors and seniors will come and actually translate for us. So you get to know the translators real well. We had like usually three or four in the pharmacy, and some of them were actually graduated students that came back from previous years. So we didn't have to know Spanish. Um, we did go over a few of the top medications that we would be dispensing so you knew what to go to because sometimes um, the doctors, when they would write out a script, they would just say, this person has this disease state, you can choose which medication because we are on a limited formulary. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just basic medication things. I mean, if you know a little bit of Spanish, it's nice because you can talk with the people and just say, hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. But besides that, not too much preparation. Okay. And you apparently brought the drugs with you when yes. you traveled. Yes. How did that come about or how does that work in terms of the organization of that? So the formulary, we choose pretty much right out what we would like and the organization that sponsors the trip sees what they can get out of that mm -hmm. formulary. We have to send uh, the formulary to the government so that they know what kind of medications we're bringing through the border and they just got shipped to us and we had to pack them up and bring them in our suitcases. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did the students actually fund their trips? Um, we did do a few um, fundraisers through restaurants and things around the school, but a lot of it was just personal donations. Friends and family really help out. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, Dr. Parkhill, I watched the video, and one of the first things that struck me were all of the guards with machine guns <laughs> in almost every picture, including <laughs> even ones where people were singing or celebrating. Um, was security an issue? I mean, El Salvador's had been in the news quite a bit because of the gang violence and all of the people the, who were trying to get to the United States from El Salvador to get away from some mm -hmm. of that violence. While we were there, I, I always felt safe, probably because the guards <laughs> yeah. were always there. But where the clinic was set up was a relatively poor area, and I don't think we were any in any danger where the clinic was set up, because they the people that live in this village, El Bocaron, they're not really involved with the gang violence that occurs in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. But that's where we were staying. It, our hotel was in San Salvador. So the guards were just with us the whole time and we had a police escort with our buses to take us to and from the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, at that time, while we were there, there was an uptick in violence. And so we did have to shut down the clinic a little bit earlier, not because we were in danger at the clinic, but just so that we could get back to the hotel and that the translators could get back to their homes in San Salvador before it became dark. Okay, so there were some precautions that yes. obviously that needed to be taken. Yes. So, okay, and was that all handled through the organization that ran the trip? So, yes, so mm -hmm. Global Health Outreach along with the, par the partners in El Salvador, which was run by a church, um, they handled all of that before we got there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I think there was a, probably a day-to-day -day debriefing about you know what time will open and, sh and shut down the clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was really a lot of precaution as yes. opposed to any significant danger that you were in. Right. Yeah. So we, okay. we had the guards with us at all times. And mm -hmm. I think every trip that we've gone to, the school has gone to um, in El Salvador has been the same. So mm -hmm. this organization always has those precautions. And um, all the faculty that have been on the trip said they've never once felt in danger. That it's just kind of a precautionary measure because most of the violence in San Salvador is against people, <laughs> native people who live in, in El Salvador, mm -hmm. not against tourists. Okay, all right. So, Joy, did you have any reservations okay. about going on the trip or did your family say you're going <laughs> where? You know? No, for me it was more that. I mean, I had heard of El Salvador, but I didn't really know about the unrest in the government um, or what was going on there. And so then I started reading about it in the news, and I told my parents, I'm like, hey, I'm going to El Salvador. They're like, okay, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really have a problem with it um, because the, um, our team leader, Andy, he's really great. He's like, if your parents or family have any issues, let them talk to me. He's been going mm -hmm. there for countless years. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it was actually interesting learning, and since being back, I keep up with the government and read about what's going on there, yeah. actually like trying to learn more about their culture and why this is going on in the unrest. 
-hmm. So I actually found out the most of the, I guess, the dangers there when I arrived. I was looking at reading Mm -hmm. the news once I started going there. I was like, oh, so this is what's going on outside of our hotel. But (laughs) it was okay. Like Dr. Parkhill said, I don't think we ever felt unsafe. Our guards were great. They became Mm -hmm. like members of our team. Mm -hmm. They would sing and talk with us and Mm -hmm. became our friends. They were a real asset. And I believe I even saw a picture of you posing with some of the weaponry. Yes. (laughs) One of our guards, Hugo, let me and a few of the other people hold his fully loaded machine gun just because it looked cool. Uh Okay. (laughs) But he he was sure to keep a very uh, close hold to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. To make sure that you didn't have any accidents. So So let's talk a little bit about the actual health care that the pharmacy students and you provided when you were there and you also went with a local pharmacist from Rochester General, is that correct? Yes. So what was the intention? What were you going to do and and how did you prepare the students for that? Well, as Joy mentioned, so we shared the formulary before we went and then we also created drug sheets about the medications that 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 we would have available to us while we were in El Salvador. So when the the patients signed up for the clinic, they first go to a triage sec- section where they did then decide where the patient will go, if they'll go mm-hmm. to the doctor, dentist, optometrist, so on and so forth. And then the, they rotate through those stations, and then the very last stop is pharmacy. And then mm-hmm. that's where we'll fill their prescriptions of whatever the physician or the, mm-hmm. the nurse practitioner prescribed for them. So you were with a team of other healthcare professionals then. Yes. You said yes. there were physicians, there were nurses, there were dentists who were yes. seeing people. And you mentioned that this was a very rural area. So is this the kind of place where people would be traveling for miles to get to a health clinic that was only open for a short time? I think it was, it was rural, but it was, we were in a village that was densely, I would say densely populated. Mm-hmm. But I think that in the past, when individuals have gone on this trip, that it has been in a more rural setting and people have traveled for miles. Um, I, don't, I don't know how far that they were able to travel because we were on a village that was on a volcano. So the roads were very steep and rocky, so it, it made it difficult for people to travel to the clinic. So that's why on certain, every day we had groups that went out to the patients as well. So to see oh, the patients in their okay. homes if they're unable to travel to the clinic. Okay. So I, I don't know the, the longest distance that the patients traveled, mm-hmm. but um, I would, you know, probably a couple miles would all that would be feasible. In, <laughs> in on, that, given that. Yeah. Kind of, okay, all right. And is this the only health care that these people have access to? I think, again, just because of where the villages and that it's on the side of a volcano. Um, it could be, or that they would have very limited access. Some of the people that we talked to, they, if they had transportation, they could, they had health care available to them. It was just getting there that sometimes was problematic. Um, also, there was a very small clinic that was in the village run by one nurse. And so we went to see her. She had her own health care problems and was unable to travel to our clinic. So there was one nurse that was in the village, and she all, was great because she also let us know of individuals that were in the village that would be um, unable to come to our clinic, so then we went out to see them. Okay, all right. So it sounds like there was a lot of good communication yes. through different, different areas. So. so Joy, from your perspective, what do you think you, uh, what did you expect to do, and, and how did it turn out in the clinic? Because you just finished your first year of pharmacy school, so you're still in the learning process, right? Yeah. yeah, so I think what we were mainly expecting to do was count pills and hand them out and counsel. Mm-hmm. And that was probably the majority of the tasks, but what we weren't expecting was doing the house visits, which was really a neat experience. Mm-hmm. Um, one day I got to go to a daycare for little kids and because their moms would be there and they would volunteer there every so often. So we got to go help those kids, give them little multivitamins and we also brought um, dresses that had been donated so we tried to fit the little girls to dresses. So that was one of the unexpected (laughs) tasks that we got to do that was really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, as as a first year student it was interesting learning like talking with the pharmacist and being like, well what should I counsel this patient on? Mm -hmm. I know this drug but should I be careful to tell them something specific about these two drugs Mm -hmm. together? So was it 
primarily um, just handing them drugs, but also talking to them about improving their lifestyle? I mean, can you say you need to get more exercise or you need <laughs> yeah. more fruits and vegetables in your diet? Or So uh, as P1s, that was 11 out of the 12 of us. We were P1s. And... Um, mm -hmm. We pretty much, each patient that would come in would get multivitamins as well as um, something that helps, uh, it's an anti-helminth, so people with like intestinal worms. So everyone would get that because they don't have really clean water and food mm -hmm. there. Okay. So every patient got that and we would tell them about it. These are your multivitamins, take them every day and then you're gonna quick chew this not so good tasting tablet right now. Okay. <laughs> um, but one of the P2 students um, was doing more of diabetes education and hypertension education. So okay. she did help them with their diet and telling them what they should and shouldn't um, eat, especially mm -hmm. because the way the food is there, people don't realize this is, like, you're taking in sugar. Like someone was saying, oh, I don't really like this tea, so I just add a bunch of sugar into it. But that's not the point. Like you need to right. stay away from some of those things when you have those long-term disease states. Mm -hmm. And when you went into the home visits, what what kind of homes are we talking about? Oh my goodness, it was so <laughs> eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Like we're so fortunate in this country, even like what we would consider poor here was nothing compared to that. Mm -hmm. People would have like this tiny little stove inside and then they'd have their outdoor stove. And uh, in the village that we were working in, El Bocaron, they're completely dependent on rainwater. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, they were having a drought. So it was, oh. they were so generous with us with like helping us like wash our hands with the rainwater and everything. We weren't allowed to drink the water, but as far as using the water, they were mm -hmm. so generous. Um, but you would just see these huge cisterns that would catch their rainwater and then you'd go into these houses that we wouldn't even consider houses. A lot of their living was kind of done outside. Okay, so, yeah. all right. So mm -hmm. it was pretty primitive, you'd uh, say? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so outdoor, sh outdoor showers and then the outdoor stove is just a fire, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. so okay. it's not very, yeah, very, very primitive. Mm -hmm. Chickens and cats and dogs running all over the place. Yeah. yeah, okay. So it looked from some of the pictures and videos that I saw that you did more than just have health care um, providing with, that, with the people that you met with. It looked like you kind of participated in some aspects of the life of the village. Would, would you say that's accurate? Did you want to go? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that we, since we were at the end of the clinic, I think most of the time we kind of were stuck mm -hmm. in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. But on certain days, um, we were the clinic was held in a school. So there was kids around us all the time, mm -hmm. and they were always peeking in, looking to see what everyone's doing. Yeah. And so uh, the kids were out playing, and if, we, if the students weren't so busy, or weren't busy, they would be out there interacting with the kids mm -hmm. as well. And then at the last day of clinic, which was Friday, was only a half day because we needed time to pack up. People were singing and oh, yeah. oh, dancing. A home well, visit, so right? <laughs> there was a home visit, and there was this lady. She was in her 80s, and the group had gone and saw, saw her one day, and they were like, they were about to leave, and she's like, wait a second, I want to sing you a song. And so she sang a song that was like five minutes long. She's like, but wait, don't leave. I'm going to sing another song. Okay. <laughs> so the next day, I got to go out on the home visits, and they're like, let's go see that lady again. And we just went up to her house, and she's like so happy to see us, and she sang songs with us. And it was really cool because then if we bring up the guards again, they were standing around clapping and singing the songs too because right. they were like mm -hmm. cultural folk songs there. And that I guess that would be how we got mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. there. And then even when our patients, when we would counsel them on the medications because we were the last stop, they would give us hugs and say, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure on the last day, one of the moms offered, like, if you come back again next year, you can come to my house. Like, they're just mm -hmm. so grateful mm -hmm. and open to us being there. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you stayed in a hotel in San Salvador. Did you um, eat with the people in the village or at the clinic, or how, how were meals handled? So we had breakfast at the hotel, like a, uh, you know, just a normal breakfast mm -hmm. buffet, and then at lunch, we ate lunch at the clinic, uh, and that was prepared by the, the church. That was like our host mm -hmm. church there, so they prepared the lunch there, and then dinner was at the hotel that night, because mm -hmm. we did have to be very careful about eating food that was correctly prepared without the water. Right, um, right, yeah. So so I could see where that could be. Yeah. You never know how much you miss pretty. salad until you can't have it for a week. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have any like veg or fruits or vegetables that were just fresh or washed just right, there, unless right. it was like a watermelon that's inside of the fruit. But that was mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I missed, I think, was salad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yes. So um, could you talk a little bit about how this trip has kind of impacted your view of you yourself as a pharmacist and you know going into your rotations now in your second and third years what you think you're taking with you yeah um, definitely making sure like to care for the patient know where they're coming from it's very hard to tell some of these patients like what they can and can't eat because the unhealthy foods might be all that they can afford and just taking into their stories and how to treat them um, going into my rotations I want to go back so and keep <laughs> serving the population there um, so that's what I would take away, just making patient care the primary concern and knowing where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. So you think at some point you might want to actually work abroad or? I don't know if I could work abroad, that whole missing the fruits and vegetables thing, yeah. but <laughs> I definitely want to continue. Um, next summer I hope to go to El Salvador and then do a longer trip during my P4 year when we do the longer rotations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and um, Dr. Parkhill, I, I know some people might say, well, there's there are a lot of people in need here in Rochester and in the United States. And I know the School of Pharmacy does a lot of mm -hmm. outreach to the community also, but people might say, well, why would you go to another country as opposed to staying here where there's also a need? Well, I agree there's there's also a need here. Going, Being immersed in another culture, you just get a different perspective. And as Joy mentioned, um, poor in El Salvador is different than poor in the United States. Yeah. It, it really is. Um, so they are living in a hut, essentially, that doesn't have running water, doesn't have electricity, and they're using a fire to cook, to cook all their meals. That's mm. something that even the poor in the U.S. often don't experience. I wouldn't, right. mm. So I think that, that getting that perspective is great for students just to be aware mm. of the needs of the world and that there's a lot of need in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, also though, I think that experiencing something like that makes you come back to Rochester and also you know, be more aware of the needs of your community and want to do something. Mm -hmm. In El Salvador, it was the people, even though they had so little, were so generous in spirit. And it just mm -hmm. like put a fire under you that you really want to do something. You want to do something for the poor and mm -hmm. you appreciate all that, that we have. So when you come back home, you look at your life in a different way, and you just, you know, want to do everything you can to help those in need, even in the U.S. And I think also just experiencing a different culture is a great experience for mm -hmm. students as well. So experiencing a different culture and then realizing how tremendous the need is outside of the U.S. I think those are two good things that come out of this trip. Yeah, excellent point. Do you think it's changed the way you approach your teaching of your students? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I th I've always had a service focus, um, and but I had such a great time <laughs> with the students <laughs> on the trip, yeah. so I feel like I'm, I'm a much closer to the students now than I was before. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's great. Um, I probably haven't realized how how much it's changed me yet because you know the trip was right before the semester started right, yeah. so everything was kind of already planned for that semester so I couldn't make a lot of changes but I think I I plan on going on trips every year if I can mm -hmm. so I think that it will be something that will contribute to my development as a teacher for sure excellent excellent now I understand you had to present something about your trip to the current pharmacy yeah. students so that they would know what it's about. What was, how did you put that together? What, I mean, it sounds like you have so much to talk about. So <laughs> I think <how> <laughs> we only talked to, well, I put that together yeah. initially. <laughs> um, and I think I only included like 5% of what we did or in our experience because our everything was, we, we did so much there and we got mm. to see so much and even like traveling there was an adventure <laughs> and getting you know getting back was an adventure so there was like so many stories that we could have told but we only had like 10 minutes or so mm -hmm. oh okay so so i just put it together put together the highlights so that the students would just kind of see what the pharmacy was like mm -hmm. and you know kind of give a rundown of what to expect when you got there mm -hmm. okay and were there any kinds of mishaps along the way? Did anyone get sick or <laughs> injured? Or I mean, especially you mentioned having to be so careful with your diet and the water and everything. So I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first well, 
we arrived in San Salvador late, very late Saturday night. And then on Sunday, it was, it's very hot there. Mm -hmm. um, on Sunday, we went out for lunch as a whole group and we went to, in the World Trade Center area in San Salvador, very nice area. Um, there was a coffee shop there. <laughs> and a lot of people from the group were in there getting coffee. So uh, I walked in there and ordered an iced coffee. And I drank it. Oh, yeah. ice. ice. The ice yeah. was made yeah. with it was the, the ice. local water. So, yeah. yes, I, I didn't feel well that evening. Mm. But luckily, by Monday, I was, you were okay. I was recovered, yes. Okay. Yeah. And pretty much, if anything happened, like, as far as health-wise, we had enough medications to cover if people needed anything. <laughs> yeah. And the do you're with a team of doctors. Yeah. doctors. <laughs> so that, that makes it very yes. helpful. So, yeah. so, Joy, you've already mentioned wanting to go back again are you have you decided you want to return to the same yeah. location? <laughs> I like yeah. we're even the translators that are still down there going to high school and stuff mm -hmm. we talk with them or some of them are in college and I talk to them on Facebook and I'm, we're friends with them so I can't wait to go back and are you going to work on your Spanish this year to yeah I always said that to? even last year I said I was going to but then it was like a week before the trip and I'm like I still don't know hello mm -hmm. but no right I mm -hmm. might work a little bit harder on it this year too, mm -hmm. so I can have a closer interaction Excellent. Well, Dr. Gomez, I think, wants to offer his elective, so that will give you an opportunity yes, yes. To, to do something next semester to get ready. So is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you wanted to say about the trip or anything you think people should know about, you know, the pharmacy students and, and what they're doing out there? I don't know. I, th I think that, I guess I would just say that if you have even a little bit of interest in doing a trip like this, that you should do it because mm -hmm. the benefits out really outweigh all, any money that you're going to be putting mm -hmm. into it. So it's just a, it really is a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. And I think almost every student that's gone on the trip wants to go on another one yeah. sometime that's in their right, life. Maybe yeah. they can't afford it while they're in pharmacy school, but mm -hmm. then they're going to do it when they're out practicing as a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that if you're even a little bit interested to, you know, go for it, try to find a way to go on a trip it, like yeah. that, because I think it's, it's life changing and the perspectives you have on your patients or, you know, just your general community are going to be changed. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not a pharmacy student though, because we had a whole group of people that weren't medical professionals or nurses or anything like that, that still they helped the patients get through as the whole team of logistics right, and that's okay. very important because if we're busy in the pharmacy we can't help the patients get through our, the system that we have laid out. Yeah. So anyone who wants an experience like this is awesome. We even had some kids that were helping out with the kids ministry doing face painting and stickers and bubbles. And oh, excellent. So that's fun. Okay, so you don't have to be a healthcare no, professional. No, uh, most of the out. team oh, yeah. really wasn't because it was, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. there was almost as many people that weren't healthcare providers mm -hmm. on the team as there were healthcare providers. Excellent. But, mm -hmm. And I think even, like Joy said, some of those people have probably even were able to have more interactions mm -hmm. because it, we were busy in the yeah. pharmacy. Right. So, but right, if you're yeah. just helping patients um, find their way through the clinic, mm -hmm. you really got to have some close interactions. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, uh, I want to thank you both very much for coming in today, Dr. Amy Parkhill and Joy Snyder from the School of Pharmacy. And thank you also for sharing all your pictures and, and video with us, because that's going to help people really understand what yeah. the situation was like. So, so thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us on our community forum. I'm Dr. Lauren Vicker, and we'll see you next time.